Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Sunday School. We're beaming to you live from our studios at 93.5 KRFM at the Boulevard Baptist Church. Welcome. Our lessons are from the Caribbean Christian publications, Living the Word series. In the studio today are sisters Vicky, Sandro, and Novo, and I am Debbie. Go ahead, my sisters, and say your good mornings. Good, good morning, morning, everybody. Yes, so starting today, July 9th, we begin with a new unit in the Caribbean Bible Lesson series entitled A Contrast of Natures. And so as we unfold for the rest of the month, next week we look at bringing light to darkness. And on our third Sunday, we will look at Jesus versus the enemy. And we close out this month's series on the 30th when we look at love defies hate. So what is our topic for today? Our topic for today, a contrast of beliefs. And our Bible focus is on 1 John 1 and the Gospel of John chapter 1. We will be doing a parallel study of the epistle of 1 John chapter 1 and the Gospel of John chapter 1. So let us all pause and take a breath and let us now recite our memory verse for today. This comes to us from 1 John 1 and verse 2. Let's begin. The, the life appeared, appeared. We, we have seen, seen it, and, and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was the Father, has appeared to us. Amen? Amen. First John 1 and verse 2. So, what does the Bible have to say about our topic for today? The Bible truth is, Jesus is the Son of God, the son of man, the savior of souls, and the bridge of relationship with God. So now, as we go into a lesson as usual, we have a life question. So we are all asked to ponder on this question today. What are my beliefs regarding Jesus' identity? Yes, let us think about this question. What are my beliefs concerning Jesus's identity? So then a quick overview. What are we going to learn today? This first lesson in this unit posits that false gospel teachers do not swear true believers because they hold firmly to the foundation of their faith, yes? The unit will unfold and let us be aware that false gospel teachers do not sway us true believers. Why? Because we hold firmly to the fundamentals of our faith. Then what is that fundamental you ask? Well, it is simply, Jesus is the eternal son of God, the God man, the living word and the light. So let us continue, having set that tone and having agreed that this is what our lesson will be today, how will it unfold? I will, I will do the discussion, I will, I will lead the discussion on the That's Life story. Sister Vicky will continue with the first lesson, the eternal son of God. Sister Sandro will do lesson two, the man of God, the God man, the living word, and Sister Nova will lead the discussion, the light. But before we go any further, we're going to ask Sister Vicky to lead us in prayer. Okay, gracious God. Thank you once again for pouring out your grace upon us, keeping us safe throughout the past week. Your steadfast love 
and faithfulness never fail us. Thank you, Father. And as we gathered here this morning to expound on the word of God, to help others embrace your holy and righteous ways, be with us, divine Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so let us continue with our That's Life story. This is our story for today. As a child, Colin had accompanied his maternal grandmother to church twice a month, so he had some knowledge about Christ. However, five years ago, during his young adult years, Colin experienced Jesus as savior and friend and committed his life to him. Colin took the decision during a summer crusade at a church in the neighboring community. Since Colin became a Christian, he had been encouraging his family members to serve God and has been transporting them to church every Sunday. He also attends Sunday school regularly. Now, lately, Colin's friend from high school, Brian, with whom he shared a special friendship, has become a member of another church. During one of their recent conversations, Brian told Colin that Jesus was another God and not really the Son of God. Colin believes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for his sins. So the comments from Brian, whom he trusts, have caused doubts for him. Colin has wondered, how can I be certain that Jesus exists forever? Is Jesus really the Son of God? So here's our question for the day, ladies. Who is Jesus? And we're asked also to, if we knew Colin, how would we help him to deal with his doubts concerning Jesus' identity? Have you ever heard this, quest this question before? Have you ever felt any doubt? Any one of us here have ever felt any doubt? Hmm? I've heard the questions. But um, you have never felt any doubt? No. All right. So let us ponder <laughs> on this a bit. Who is Jesus? This question has enraged, has confounded, and has delighted people for over 2,000 years. Some are even asking, who is Jesus for us today? The answer, in my opinion, this is my belief, the answer is in the Bible. So to answer the question of who Jesus is, and help Colin with his doubt, I would let the Bible tell us what the scripture says about Jesus, since the entire Bible is about him. So remember, even Jesus himself asked the question of the disciples in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? Do you remember that? Yes. You remember their answer? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or even some other prophets. However, if we recall most profoundly, having heard their answers, Jesus posed the question directly to his disciples. The same question we've been asked to answer today. Who is Jesus? So in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 15, Jesus said to his disciples, but what about you? Which is us today, you know. What about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? So this is the exact question we're being asked to answer. It's like Jesus asking us this question today. So remember what happened next? Simon answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. And this is what, pay attention to verse 17. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. 
And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So then, what is Jesus saying to us in this particular scripture? He's saying, what Peter just said is the truth about me. This is who I am. So we ask the question, who is Jesus? Jesus is the Messiah. He is the son of the living God. So once we know that as a fact, Jesus confirmed it when, 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 when Peter said it. So then no false doctrine cannot counter the truth that is found in the Bible. And why is that so? Because we are reminded of 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, which says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching. So what, what have you, so, so would you say that this explanation, how else would you, my sisters? The, the, the last thing I would say on this um, is for, for Colin, hear it what I would say to Colin as well. I would invite Colin to take a look again at the Apostles' Creed, which is the foundation um, for Christians. It is an ecumenical um, profession of the faith. So, you know, it's in three parts. The belief in God the Father and the belief in Jesus Christ the Son. So I would repeat that very section for Colin. And here is what it says, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Um, what say you? Is this, is this another, is there another way to explain? How would you explain how Jesus is? Would you agree to this explanation? Yes. I'd agree. Who, yeah, what you what 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 do you think is causing Colin's doubt? What is because um he let me see now. His friend Brian it, it, is it, trusting. It, it, it's his friend, right? And friends tend to influence us. Yes. And there are times when friends may say things not only about Jesus or our spirituality, but sometimes even suggest things about our mother or whatever it is. And we tend to believe our friends because we have respect for our friends. But I believe that, as the word says, um, it said something about, use the word swaying. Mm -hmm. Colin was swayed. I don't know for how long he was swayed, but I would just ask Colin to remember when he first met Jesus Christ. Remember mm -hmm. the encounter he had with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He and Jesus together, and the, 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 the transformation and the realness of Jesus Christ to him. I would encourage Colin to before he begin to doubt too much, go back to that day. Yes. Go back to that day and remember what Jesus did to him, he Colin. Because he's you know? now wondering, how can I be certain <coughs> that Jesus exists forever? Mm -hmm. So you would say, go back to that back day, to the day when, you met when Jesus. he had that encounter. And, and yes. it must have been something that kept him to this point because he was a Christian from that day to now. You know, we don't know how we are him now, but he's yeah. still a Christian now. Yes. So, so is there remember. something to say about whether or not we are, when we say yes, we're really convicted? Um, because we can see many persons, you know, a new, a new church um, springs up and, and then everybody go and join <coughs> and there are some things in there that is mm -hmm. really not savory, but yet there is a push towards it. Colin, and, and these are same Christians from other churches. Colin was the fully grounded. Mm -hmm. he, he was the fully grounded. Um, yes, maybe he is young in the faith. He was young in the faith. He wasn't fully grounded, and it, it you know, he was swayed easily by what his friend came back to say, what he had learned from the other church, and maybe his friend was putting it off in such a spiritual way yes. that he felt that his friend was so, you know, can convict him yes. to come to his church. So. 
he had to lean on his teaching what he's getting or whoever is getting this nasty teaching from yes. the other side you have to learn and know your the word of God yourself. Yes. yes. So the so the false prophecy, prophecy if you don't if you are not in the word, right. just like so, I was explaining yeah, all of that right. before and what Jesus so, asked. Because so. Jesus asked his disciples that same question, because it's something that people are asking. They were asking back then and they're still asking today. Right. So we have to know what the answer yes. is. And you have to be in the word. Continue in the word. Right. Always. And you see. Mm -hmm. But it's funny. <coughs> it's funny. I remember John the Baptist after John came and John was a forerunner. He was telling people about Jesus, and yet there was a time when John was asking his disciples to go and ask him if he's <coughs> if he's the one. So many times in our Christianity, we doubt. I don't know why, for what reason. There's always a doubt. Satan. Yes, yes, I was about to say the evil one. one. Even he was, Insert he was himself. Telling Jesus to, if you are the son of God, and that sort of thing, you know. So he comes in with his <coughs> lies all the time. Yeah. So. All right, so so we continue. So we so we think that, that that's life story. Colin would have understood that by just going back to scripture, by just reminding himself what are the foundations um, of the faith, what are we professing, so he would know, be re-energized, and would be able to go back to um, Brian and say, Brian, you know what? This is not so. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. So he would use scripture. So sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we have to let scripture reveal scripture. Yeah. Let the scripture teach us yeah. rather than we trying to put our own understanding on it. All right. So we know yield to Sister Vicky, that will who is now going to take us through the discussion. Yes. Jesus, the eternal son of God. Eternal son of God. <clears throat> and this comes in from 1 John 1, 1 to 4. Also John 1, 1 to 3. And in it, the Bible reads, in the beginning, which one am I? No, first John 1. Yeah, first John 1, 1 first to John 4. 1 to 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declared we unto you that we also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son jesus christ and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. And also in first in John one The Gospel of the John. Gospel of John one, mm -hmm. one to three says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks amen. be to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, and the lesson is Epistle of John, of First John. Yes, the one eternal one son of the God. Eternal son of God. And the apostle of John, 1, 1 to 3, were written to address the dangerous spread of apostate influence in the church throughout Jerusalem and Asia. He warned <coughs> saints to have a fellowship with darkness and not to have no fellowship with darkness and to stay in the safety of the gospel of light, to strengthen their faith and to con combat the threat of false teachers, yes. the Antichrist the Gnosticism who denied the incarnation of Jesus and the Gnostics were dualists who worshiped two or more gods and focused on eradication of ignorance while Christians were monists and worshiped one God and concerned themselves to eradication of sin. Mm -hmm. The <coughs> infiltration of false teachers occurred during the period of the church maturing existence over mm -hmm. 30 years after the start of the early church, 
false teachers cares nothing about what God wants and mm -hmm. everything for what man wants. And this is referred to as, they were referred to as men pleasers. Mm -hmm. Just as these were, <coughs> just as they were false teachers then, they are among us now. And who, mm -hmm. and they are amongst us now, and who will secretly bring in this destructive heresies into our lives? Yes, we have to be grounded, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. First John was written to assure that true believers <coughs> that they have eternal, that they have eternal life, mm -hmm. to practice righteousness and to love one another, and that Jesus exists in in love and harmony with God the Father. The apostle confirms that Jesus is the supreme son of God, who was the only son born of a mortal mother, Mary, and mm -hmm. an immortal father, God the Father, <coughs> lived among us, died an agonizing death, resurrected, mm -hmm. and lives forever. His death has set us free and gives us promise of eternal life from sin. Yes. The apostle John 1, 1 describes the beginning as the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Right. So this shows that Jesus existed before the beginning and is both the beginning and the end of all life, as, the Alpha and the Omega. as referred to in Revelation 22, 30, which describes Christ as the Alpha and Omega, the yes. first and the last. Yes. This is claiming that unlimited eternal quality relationship with <coughs> God. Yes. Verse 3 also shows that Jesus existed before the universe and is greater than all he made dominions, principalities, and powers. This is the reason why homage should not be paid to all other heavenly or earthly beings created by God. One of the most important titles of Christ is the Word. The idea behind this title <coughs> embodied God's revelation of himself to humanity. John shared his personal knowledge and obedience to God through Jesus Christ. He and other apostles of Jesus and many other people acknowledge and confirm the word of God, the incarnate nature of Jesus who took human form, heard and touched Jesus, and was touched by Jesus. To experience the spiritual rebirth into the family of God is to have fellowship with God the Father and his Son, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Christians need to study the written word of God to learn more about the incarnate word of God so they can unite together in the joy of salvation with confidence in the identity of Jesus Christ whom they serve and worship. Yes. So, so what are we hearing um, from Sister Vicky's discussion that she, the, her particular part comes from John 1, and first John 1. So John intended that the church be reminded that Jesus was the infinite and everlasting God and the word to whom they should listen and obey. Agree, agree? Yes, agree. So Jesus is the word of God and the word of life that was seen and heard publicly and privately. So we agree, we're in agreement, Sister um, Vicky with your explanation of the eternal son of God, who God is. So the writer was intended on strengthening the belief of the faith of the Christians. Mm -hmm. And I can say today at this table, right, that we, our belief is affirmed mm -hmm. yes. and we know for sure that Jesus Christ is the eternal son of God. And so we, 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 we look now at what, what is it that the God-man, he is the eternal son of God. And now the, Jesus, the God-man, the living word, um, what do we understand that to mean? Mm -hmm. Sister, Sister Sandra, what does, what does that mean? So you want us to lead us in that discussion now to okay. tell us what does it mean 
when we say Jesus, the God-man, the living word. Go ahead. Okay, so we continue with um, identifying who Jesus is. Yes. He's eternal God. He, he wasn't created. He's the son of God and so on. Now we're going to look at him as a God-man. We're going to meet him. We meet him as a God-man through John's epistle. First John 1, verse 1 to 4, where John's, John is saying, um, he said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked up, looked at, and uh, our hands have touched. Now, this has to be a living person. It has yes. to be a living person, right? Yes, the God and man. Because you can see him, you're looking at this person, you're touching him. Sometimes they, may, they might have hugged, they might have shook hands, you know. Yes. They're they looking at him with his eyes, they're seeing him, they're mingling with this person. So this is a man. We, we are meet Jesus. We are meeting Jesus now as a man, but the God-man. Okay, so John is giving us a personal account. He's not hearing about this thing. He's giving a personal account of his experience with this Jesus, who he discovered more and more was the God. He was a man, but God. In, in man, um, man, man in God, all right. Um, so, yes, and he made him, he's made, making him plain to us, just as how we can, like John, we can be convinced that God, that Jesus was man, but he was also God. Let us look and see why, why it is that, that he, and, and he's also been declared as the, as the, Jesus, um, also Sister Sandra, Jesus himself referred to himself as the son of man. As the son of man. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, and there are other, there are other, there are, as, there are other aspects of them that don't, don't, don't have to go in detail. Jesus washed people's feet, you know. He broke bread. He, he prepared breakfast. That is just to show you that he had hands, he had feet, he had, he had a mouth, he could talk. This is a man now. God, Jesus Christ, a man. All right, let's now look at him as the living um, word. The living word. All right. It says in the same first John. Um, John no, 1 and verse 14. John 1 and verse 14. That is the, the Apostle, Apostle John now. Yes. 1 and verse 14. What it says here is that the... 1 and verse 14. Um, it says here... The word became flesh. Here it is again. Mm -hmm. He's speaking about the God as a man now being flesh. But he goes on to say, so the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. All right. We're going to look at the word here. The, the, the word here being used in this in this um in this content it means logos all right now the word logos i was looking up some meaning about this word it's it's um it's, it's a greek word and this word is describing the entire what is what is it what is it describing here is the entire rational structure of knowledge right mm -hmm. and it's not referring to an abstract thing here because if he's speaking about the word becoming flesh and made his dwelling among us, it can't be an abstract. It can't be a thing. It's an it has embodiment. to be an embodiment. It has yes. to be a life. Yes. Okay? And this is all the word of life is coming in too. So what are we saying then? So this entire rational structure of knowledge is referring to Jesus. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is, it is, what it has done, it, it has personified the word. That is not just word, it's a human being. And this Jesus Christ, right, is, as John is saying, Jesus Christ is the entire rational structure of knowledge. And the embodiment of and God. And the embodiment of God, yes. right? And here it is now, this is how his, um, his, his godliness is coming out now. He existed before time, this word, because that's what it says. Yes before time even before the beginning and it was he who brought the life of this universe into being 
how did he do that? You remember what he said? Let us make. He just spoke the word and it was done. Right? Mm. He is the word who by his utterance brought life into the universe by what he said and also we are also testimony of that because he made us into our own image and after his own likeness. Right. Yes, so, so the, 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 the Hebrew, and, and you, you recall too that um, that was the Greek. That's the Greek The meaning. Greek, yes, the so for the Logos. And then right. the Hebrew, um, the Hebrew meaning, the word as exp the word was another expression for God in the Hebrew uh, meaning. Yes. In the Hebrew yes. scripture, the word was the source of God's message to his people through the prophets. Yes. And so that's why when you read in German, all the other prophets, they say the word of the the word of God came to me saying. Remember, that is how yes, it was usually yes. expressed. We yes. say, yes. And what I noticed though is we notice that God has many different names. He's called yes. the, the, the Almighty, He's called the El Shaddai, and so on. So, this is just another name <coughs> that is given to Jesus, Jesus Christ. So, we go on now to Jesus being the Word of the Living Word. Jesus is the Living Word and the Word of Life. So, Jesus spoke the Word that brought life into being. And he continued to preach and to teach the word that brought the, the, um, eternal life, giving eternal life to those who believed on him and trusted in what he was saying, right? He, he gave his life, right? The, 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 living, the living word. He, so he was alive and he gave his life as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world through his blood. And it's through that that he gave us eternal life. So we are seeing here God, the man who dwelled among John. John was a, 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 a John testified of him, not a thing he heard. He so mingled with him. So right? we're seeing we're seeing Sister um, Sandra, um, Sister Sister Vicky's section spoke up, spoke about the incarnate, you know, God, the man. God, man, Jesus, being born, as the Apostles' Creed said, of the Virgin Mary, an incarnate yes, birth. Yes. So now you're putting it together. Now he's born. He's born and now. we're seeing him. John is testifying. Of him. He's touching. He's healing people. Yes. And now you're going into the part that says the living word. So this word, when he speaks, the word, Jesus being the living word, and also the word that proceeded from his from mouth, his mouth which is also brings life. Brings life, eternal life, what yes. you preach and so on. And it transforms it life. Transforms life. Yes, so in the living so, word, mm -hmm. Jesus being the living word is transformative. transformative. Jesus being the living word, he speaks and things come into being. Yes. Yes, so I'm go, go ahead, I'm, I'm following yes. you. Just trying to connect both dots. All right, so, so I think we have gone through the God man, we, so we understand why why it is that he was called the God man. He existed as a man, but he was God. And Pop, um, John John was able to say he, he spoke about the glory, right? We beheld his glory, and we know what his glory was about by what he did, what he did. His preaching, his healing, is and and even his, he experiences like when he was when, during the transfiguration when. Yes. Three disciples were, were, were witnessing to this another aspect of this Jesus Christ. His glory. The God part, the, the glory. God part of Him. So, God, so lesson two, we can agree and we can join with the other apostles, not the Antichrist, that Jesus Christ is the God man. He is the living word <coughs> and He is the word of life because of. Um, what John is testifying to us and what Jesus Christ did. Yes, and I think John, um, in First John, even First John, Second John, Third John, I think what John is trying to get across to us as Christians as well is that we're not only fellowshipping with the Father, but alone, but also with the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. So, so, and we are confident um, in Jesus's identity. Mm -hmm. Because as we fellowship with God and Christ, we have joy. So this is not something that is, 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 is fake. We experience genuine joy as we fellowship and understand who Jesus is and understand his identity. 
So we are the righteousness of God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. So we understand what Jesus means. He came to the world to save us, to, to, to cleanse us of our sins, and we become righteous because of our belief in Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Agree, agree? Amen. Amen. All right. So, Sister, thank you, Sister Sandra. So, Sister Nova, um, you now have the final part, yeah. Jesus the light. Yeah. Um, what do Jesus the light, what does that mean? Okay. In this section, Jesus was presented as the light that overcomes the darkness. Yes. Okay, in the passage, um, John 1, 5, it says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And the two passages shows that Jesus is the light, and His light shines in darkness and delivers us from our sins. He is our source of light. God sends his son to overcome the darkness of this world. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying in these verses, I will show you that the, the way to God. In Jesus there is light and there is also life. And yes. we have to let God's will be done in our lives. As Christians, there is joy in knowing that when Jesus came, we would not be the same, be the same or we would not be alone because God is with us. The passage is also saying to us that God is with us from the beginning. And when darkness comes, he always finds a way of escape for us. Jesus yes. came to be our light, no matter what comes our way. When we have Jesus, there is always hope. When we accept Jesus, we receive both eternal life and, and abundant life. We and the eternal life. Right, right. Yes. When we accept him, we have to reflect that light yes. and share it with others. So what, what that reminds you? Let your light so shine, shine before men yes. so, so that, that they will see, see your Father and glorify, and glorify God in heaven. Yes. yes. So we have to share it with others so yes. that they too can have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Agree, agree. Amen. Yes. So living the light is not a one-time decision. Mm -hmm. To live in the light also means that Christians must daily live in surrender to God by putting God's mm. will above our own and the activities that we do. Yeah. So we continue in the light by accepting Jesus then as our personal Savior and Lord. We receive, when we do that, as Sister Nova says, we receive both eternal life yeah. and abundant yeah. life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to, um, as Christians, we have to connect the dots mm -hmm. and we have to draw and see ourselves that Jesus is the light. The one whose holiness illuminates us. And when we were in darkness and now we have accepted the light. And how does that work when we say we accept the light? We first come to a confession that we have sinned. And then we seek forgiveness. And we ask the Lord to deliver us from our sins. And in faith we believe that our sins are forgiven. So that is the kind of light that transforms us. So Persons can be very dark, dark places, murderers, things that people do. And just, you know, the evil one holds them there in that darkness. And when we hear testimonies of persons transformed life, that is when we can see the whole, the light of Jesus mm -hmm. can change and transform us. So nothing but the light that does that. And Jesus is the light. And he's the way. What else is Jesus? The truth. The truth. Yes, and the life. He also is the door. Yes. So, so Jesus, there's many ways of describing um, Jesus. So who is Jesus for us today? He is the Messiah, the so one who the came word. to save. He is the living word. word. He is the word of life. He is the word of life. He's the God man. He is the God man. He is the living word. Um, so we are sitting here and we're we, we we are understanding you know that as christians what are we believing in 
So, so never again can someone ask us, who is Jesus? And we, like Colin, we are in doubt. Mm -hmm. We just simply, we just have to know the truth. And where do we find the truth about who Jesus is? In his word. In his word. In his word. So then as Christians, we can't be outside of the word because we will be lost. And we, anybody who comes with some false teaching, we will be easily swayed. Yes. This is what happened to Colin. Yes. So Colin wasn't quite grounded. So this new fancy, um, new era, contemporary interpretation that Brian brought to him brought doubt to Colin's mind. So we are expected, my sisters and brothers who will be listening to this, that we have to be grounded in the word of God. We have to understand the word. We have to go to the word and through the Holy Spirit seek interpretation. And so that when we encounter these interactions with our friends, we know for sure who we are and whose we are. Agree, agree? Yes. Agree. yes. Yes, so, so, this, so the reality check today is, is for us to do this. You know, um, we, we can right now, having gone through this lesson, it will not make it difficult that we could take on this assignment to write two statements indicating why you believe Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of humankind. So we have gone through the passages of Scripture. Um, the entire epistle of 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John. Everyone can read it for themselves. That particular, um, if those particular epistles are focused because the church, just like Colin, you know, in his mind and in, in his space is being conflicted. The church was conflicted. The church, other new age kind of teaching had come into being. And so, um, John decided that he was going to write these letters to explain and to, and to, to show everybody who Jesus um, is. Yes, Sister Chandra. I was, saying, I was thinking something just now. When Colin's friend came to him and was, well, whatever he, he, he said to him, could Colin have, in, well, listen to what he said, and mm -hmm. then he, he too could have um, shared his belief with this person, with this friend. Yes. You know, he could have said it because when Trevor's witness used to come to our houses, you know, my mother used to run them, but sometimes we used to listen to them. But when they finished talking, we would also say to them, but so and so. You yes, know? yes. So I'm just saying, yes, so you have to. You have to listen, but you have to defend or to say what we What we agree too. that it is a word, the word, the living saying, word. You know, that's what I'm saying. Remember, remember, the scripture, you know, is also the living word. Right. It is for teaching, it is God breathed. So if you don't have it as Christians on your lips, on your tongue, right, right. anybody can say anything, anything and you can't counter. To you. Anything to you. you see that? So, right, Sister Vicky? Yes. You can't and counter like because you said, don't have the words on your lips. Colin was but, not grounded yet in the faith to know what to do. And what that's to say. What to my, say. Mother, my mother, you see, I remember one day, I don't want to go too far, but when they come to our gate, she would carry her Bible. She had a very big Bible. Yes. And she would put it down and let them talk. And then that's what she used to do. Yes. And she talked to her, she said, anytime talking to them, open the Bible. So she said, she opened the Bible and said to them, but and they, they didn't like it. They didn't like when we came to them with the Bible. They didn't like it. And she said, yes. anytime they come to you, you carry the Bible. Yes, yeah, so, so, this is, so this is not just um, that denom, but for everybody, everybody for the else. unbeliever, the right. person who have not yet experienced Experience. Christ, is that we bring the word, yeah. the living right. word to them. Because sometimes when you read the Bible, I don't know if you have that experience, what? it is such an aha, uh -huh, the revelation is so profound that you are literally mm -hmm. jerked, yes, you got yes. a jerking in your seat. Yes, yes, yes. So the word of God is alive, it's living, it's, a, it's take on life as you read it. So the Holy Spirit does that enabling for us. The more you read it, yes. the more you, you get in because you can't just read one chapter. Yes. It takes you. Yes, and you notice how this lesson, beginning. yes, you see this lesson yeah. is a parallel. Yeah. Notice that, just is that the word, re, re, just like you're saying, you, you have to look at it in parallels. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not just in John and First John. 
Yes, so we, we did Matthew. Matthew. It's in Colossians. Is it? Yes. Yes. You have to go. Yes. It's all over. Yes. So 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 that's why Bible study and Sunday school mm -hmm. is so important. Yes. Yeah. So we can't so, neglect those um, part of our responsibilities as Christians. So let us, having gotten this new revelation today. Let us just pause and take all of this down and let us close in prayer. So we, what should we do having learned all of what we, 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 we heard today as the Holy Spirit spoke to our hearts? We should seek to experience Jesus' deliverance from the darkness of sin and live in daily surrender to him, our light. Right? So let us pray. Triune God, we thank you for the revelation we received today concerning the identity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the clarity this lesson has brought to us here in the studio. We pray that through the enabling of your Holy Spirit, the hearers of this lesson will better understand Jesus' identity and come to know him and deepen their relationship with him. Lord, as we go into the general worship service, please grant us receptive hearts and attentive minds. We ask you to bless us throughout this day and guide and protect us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.